Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today I have a very special guest, uh, Babaji from Exotic Astrology and he's going to be speaking about uh, Ascendance and Planets in the Ascendance. So I'm very honored to have you on my channel and over to you Babaji. Thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> No I recently did a webinar and on that I spoke only yesterday for around 50 minutes. So I don't know for how long I'll speak here. <laughs> so what should I speak on the ascendant? Tell me whatever you want, I will speak. So just ascendance, uh, you can just start with the basic, like uh, first, uh, what kind of ascendance, uh, different people have different ascendance. And then some people actually have planets in their ascendance or planets aspect in their ascendance from different houses. So we would like to hear about that. And what's the significance of uh, those planets? Yeah, so generally what they will do is in astrology, they will take the ascendant i will tell you first how they see the ascendant and, and then i will tell you why that is wrong <laughs> okay <laughs> because first to learn something we have to unlearn the wrong things right true true so let me uh, start with some examples here so now somebody may not be aware of the ascendant ascendant is generally the first house i'll explain about the ascendant later but suppose uh, in India or in any other place, you get horoscopes for matching them for marriage. All right. Mm -hmm. So suppose uh, there's a man who gets uh, two horoscopes, okay, of two girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a very interesting question. Suppose there's one lady whose horoscope is, and suppose uh, as per compatibility, the man is compatible with both of them suppose let's take a utopian scenario so it's more of the free will which one he marries okay mm -hmm. so suppose then uh, there is one lady who has a great ascendant or a lagna or the first house <laughs> mm -hmm. and she has a difficult seventh house we will explain what difficult and what good is and all this later mm -hmm. and there is another lady <laughs> who has a great seventh house but she has a very difficult ascendant or weak ascendant or however you call it. So then uh, I would like to ask you, so <laughs> what would you suggest the person? The first one or the second one? First one has a strong first house and a weak seventh house or a difficult seventh house. Mm -hmm. And the second one has a great seventh house and you know, <laughs> difficult first house or ascendant or lagna whatever you say what 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 would you suggest the person i would suggest the strong ascendant <laughs> yeah you're right you got it because yeah. <clears throat> see uh the planets are always transiting like currently jupiter is in jeshta in the sidereal side it's in scorpio mm -hmm. saturn is in purvashada all these things are there but that's the energy of the universe that's not you or me <laughs> We are getting affected by it, but we are not that. But when we have a planet in our horoscope, it means that that uh, is like the first house defines who we are. The Lagna will tell us what is our identity in the entire universe. The universe has planets here, there, in this house, that house. Okay. But the Lagna will tell. Who are you in that universe? <laughs> like you may be in a school where there are hundred students. But then inside that you are in section A, you are under mathematics, you are under some 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 department. Yes. You have a roll number, right? Roll number 10, roll number 20. <laughs> That's what the ascendant is. <laughs> so the ascendant sure. separates you from the rest of the universe. True. Without the ascendant, you have no identity. You don't, you don't exist. <laughs> so that is why it is the first house. That's the body because the body is a part of the universe, but it has its own identity, right? <laughs> yeah. That That's is a good, very good explain. Yeah. <clears throat> so the thing is, the first house will tell you how you view this world. <laughs> All the other houses, not only the first house, alone, 
first house tells you how you view the second house, the third house, the fourth house, the fifth house, up till the twelfth house. Mm -hmm. It is like having us uh, specs now. I don't have specs, so I can't show it here. <laughs> but in uh, in Shrimad Bhagavatam, it is said uh, there's a sloka. I don't know if it's in Bhagavatam or it's in some other scripture, but it says now Atmavan Manave Jagat. It means, now there are many translations to this shloka. One of the translations is that the world is a mirror of your own consciousness. True. It is not what it appears to be. It is what you want you to, what you want it to be like. And that is why they say that a person who only has good inside will only see the good in others. <laughs> And a person who has bad inside or difficulties inside, he or she will only see the bad outside. So what he's seeing outside is a reflection of what he has inside, basically. True. So the outside represents the other houses. For example, second house represents who? Your family. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody who you shake hands or you say, oh, this person is like my family, <laughs> that's the second house. They may not be from your blood. They may be from any other place. Mm -hmm. Third house represents your siblings. Mm -hmm. So it's like saying, I am standing here and the entire world is getting mapped in the remaining 11 houses. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anything which you have in this world, is within those 11 houses. <clears throat> Anything. I mean, enemy, sixth house, somebody, somebody will be either your acquaintance. Acquaintance is like, okay, hi, hello, bye. <laughs> Which is the house of acquaintance. That's the third house. Mm -hmm. Or they will be your friends. 11th house. 11th house, yeah. Or one of them will be your mother. Fourth house, one of them will be your father, the ninth house. <laughs> one of them, hopefully, <laughs> will be your spouse. <laughs> true, true. Yes. One of them will be your enemy. And now somebody will say that, oh, some people are like nobody for me. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, you don't know them. They are like the twelfth house. You don't know them. You don't care if they are living or they are dead, you know. <laughs> of course, you don't want that they die, but yeah. <laughs> you are just not affected by them. Mm -hmm. So the ascendant you, the first house, is telling, hey, look at the other houses like this. Yeah. So it is like a radar which throws light on all the other houses. Mm -hmm. And that is why irrespective of any other house or any other planet in any other house, you will always see the ascendant will have a role in that house. Which means, for example, suppose somebody does not have any planet in the 10th house. 10th house is the house of work, basically. In these days, loosely, it can be translated as career because nowadays for people, most of the times they spend their energy is during work. Mm -hmm. Sixth house is job, of course. Seventh house is business. But tenth house is like what you do in life. So suppose you don't have a, suppose you don't have any planet in the tenth house, okay, or you have a planet, suppose. Then what happens? You will think that oh, I have Venus in the tenth house. You will say, you know, that person is very lazy. Typical Venus in tenth house, very lazy, doesn't like to do stuff, or they will only do things if they like. But the problem with this statement is you are telling that the 10th house is functioning independently, which it is not. <laughs> it is not functioning independently. 10th house is functioning independently, but it is under the ascendant. It will only speak in the tone of the ascendant. True. It will never speak against. Because ultimately, <clears throat> it is the 10th house of who? <laughs> Whose 10th house is it? The person it, it is your 10th house. The 10th house of the Lagna. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It is not the tenth house of the entire world, you see. So that means when we say that planets in tenth house are behaving like this, or the person will have that kind of a career, we are saying that uh, that is uh, that's independent of what is there in the ascendant. That, but that doesn't happen, unfortunately, or fortunately. <laughs> so that means whenever we are judging any house in the horoscope, either it's the house of marriage or career or any house, we must check what is the ascendant. Yeah. where the lord of the ascendant is placed which sign is there in the ascendant which planets are aspecting the ascendant and we all know who is the karaka for the ascendant it is sun mm-hmm. but there are <clears throat> multiple things which you need to analyze in a chart when you see ascendant <laughs> now people will say oh just see the ascendant which planets are there an exalted planet in the ascendant is a blessing a natural benefit in the ascendant is a blessing the lord of the ascendant if it is exalted is a blessing have you heard of people saying all this <laughs> yeah i have yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yes very very common that's the first thing yeah, yeah. these are all things they will say but they uh, but they do that that's 50% of it <laughs> they will not see the karakas and whenever you talk of ascendant you must see these three planets you must see whichever ascendant you are it doesn't matter these three will always play their role by these three planets not three four planets i'll tell you first is the lord of the ascendant and the remaining three planets these four but sometimes uh, the lord of the ascendant is also one of these three planets mm-hmm. you know then uh, it will be three only now i will tell you why the other you know three planets because first is the karaka for the ascendant the sun mm-hmm. because sun is what basically sun is that who everybody sees right <laughs> yeah so when we go outside somewhere everybody is seeing us not that they are staring at us to <laughs> come and touch us but they just they just see us right mm-hmm. we may not be a billion or we may not be like a model but they are just seeing us that's very important so that means we are like the sun in some small way otherwise we don't exist you see <laughs> we don't have any identity there's no existence mm-hmm. the fact that somebody observes us that is the because sun is also the karaka for eyes you see eyesight mm-hmm. and then the second planet which you need to see is it is mars mars will tell you about the body they are seeing what they are seeing the body right <laughs> mm-hmm. they are seeing something they are seeing the body true but but krishna says in the gita you are not this body you are spirit soul <laughs> <laughs> so they are actually not seeing you mm-hmm. actually they are seeing somebody that means sun is there and mars mm-hmm. is there you are in this body but you are not this body so people say that uh, you are having a spiritual experience that's totally opposite mm-hmm. you are a spiritual being which is which which you are you are currently having a material experience <laughs> so that means the third planet which you need to see is jupiter mm-hmm. because it is jiva karak jiva karak means the strength of the atma Mm-hmm. strength of the atma does not mean how much determination he has that can be seen by sun and mars and where the lord of the ascendant is placed but jupiter will tell you what is the awareness of the soul mm. jupiter is nothing but how much the soul is aware in this world so the more jupiter is greater in dignity the greater awareness the soul has true the soul is very aware of everything you know mm-hmm. soul is aware okay somebody is dying <laughs> yeah. i feel pain for that person even if i don't know that person mm. that will not come from sun mars <laughs> that will come from jupiter like empathy yeah awareness basically mm-hmm. 
I am a student. I should study. That's awareness, right? You are aware that you should be studying and not just partying all the time. True. <laughs> you are going to a guru. That means you have to be submissive and you have to listen to what he says. Tad vidhi prani paate na pari prashne na sevaya. So the soul is aware that aware of how it how he should behave. And that is why the the word which is used in scriptures for the soul, which is uh, for not for the soul, for Jupiter is Dhi. Dhi is intelligence. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's the verse, you know, Satyam Param Dhimahi. That Dhimahi means the one who is the greatest level of intelligence is one who is aware of Param Satya, God. So that means the soul is completely aware that I am a servant of God. I am, I am his part and parcel. That is the highest level of awareness. Mm -hmm. You can be aware that a scorpion is hitting me or there is a sound and your sleep breaks. It's all awareness, you see. But the highest form of awareness is Satyam Param Dhimai, that I am a spirit soul. I am a servant of God. The more I serve God, the more I will be happier. That's what Jupiter represents. That is why Jupiter is the significator of spirituality. 